Alright, hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, this was the podcast that I was talking about, I still don't have a name for it. Let's let's start with that, what should the name be? So, I think the name could be just the ACARG podcast, you know, just straight up, nice, simple. Just, just us, you know, chatting for a little bit? Yeah, ACARG chat. Um, so yeah, pretty much the ACARG... Live chat. ACARG live chat. Ooh, oh, ACARG live chat. Well, yeah, it's... You know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a nice play on words from the whole Twitch world. So the ACOG podcast is mainly going to be based off of anything we think is interesting, um, things you guys might think are interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about our gaming clan, um, but yeah. Yeah, also feel free to you know, say any requests down below in the comments, what you guys would like us to, to talk about, because me and Jack are very opinionated at times, so we're <laughs> good at sharing our opinions on things. And oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think we're going to start off with, you know, introducing ourselves. Hi, you guys probably know me. I'm Caleb, leader of this channel, uh, ACOG Vision on uh, Twitch. And if you guys don't know what ACOG is, I made a video a while back explaining what ACOG is. Uh, yeah, I think I remember I didn't that. didn't go into much detail. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember that video. That was actually a pretty good video. Though, most of you who haven't seen that video... Um, pretty much ACOG is a gaming clan dedicated to gaming. Um, we play Modern Warfare, Rainbow Six, um, and we're, we're expanding. But any more game ideas that you guys would be interested in, make sure to comment down below. But yeah, our gaming clan consists of how many people? 20? About 20 people? About, yeah. And growing. And we are still growing, so I'll leave the link to our website in the video description, and there you can request to join, and, uh, you know, you just go from there. But, I did not go into much detail on who was in it that we know it for a fact. Jack, or is a rabbit. He's the one I keep talking about in videos, how I always am on games with and everything. He's an amazing streamer. Love his streams. He has, like, the best setup, you know, other than mine. I mean, my, my, mine's getting there. Yeah, I but, need to do yeah, some wire. He's, he's super good at streaming. I enjoy his streams. Videos, uh, wish he would make some more videos. Yeah, I do need to um, post more. But I am working on that. I am coming out with a brand new um, clip video. Um, though I'm thinking of adding stream clips, more stream clips. Um but yeah, uh, we'll probably have a sneak peek in here, like, right now or something. I've been dead, you're Go at your Yeah, so that's happening. But yeah, speaking of stream clips, I am starting a new uh, series on my channel called Stream Moments. If you guys watched my last video, or not my la only my last video if you're seeing this here, um, I made a rage video. That was a part of my sh Stream Moments uh, series. I was having a night stream, and I just got really mad at things, so I just made that little fun video. That was really fun to make. <laughs> Definitely looks fun. I know... I love making videos with Caleb. They're just so interesting because you never know what's going to happen in that gaming environment, and you never know what's going to occur. Like what jokes are going to happen. It's all it's all surprising, and it's all super fun to do. But yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I like about live streaming is it doesn't like really take a lot. All you got to do is you know obviously have the right setup for everything, but really to be a streamer, all you really have to know how to do is keep a conversation and like keep people entertained which is what i preferably really like to do i like entertaining people and you know it's really what i want to make a career out of yeah um so besides that and i don't mean to skip over it but besides that um we are coming out with a new video super soon it's going to be posted on caleb huntington or acog visions youtube channel it is going to be the bean boozled so i thought that was on your channel I thought you were doing that on your channel. I don't know. <laughs> we'll make it my channel. Alright, so you guys, if you guys go and head over to ACOG Rabbit's YouTube channel, uh, we're going to be doing a Bean Boozle challenge with trivia. 
What trivia questions? It's going to be gaming trivia or just trivia in general, I think. Yeah. Sure. But it's going to be super fun, and I hope you guys stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm just going to put that over there. Yeah. But in speaking of Twitch, ha- have you had any growth in Twitch lately? Um, I have. I've gotten, like, I've gotten a few followers um, in the past month. Um, I've been trying to stream more often. Uh, my setup has been a little rough lately um, due to my computer, my Wi-Fi. It's just been really slow lately. Um, but I am working to make that quality and those streams more enjoyable for you guys. Yeah, it's it's really tough to boost quality when you don't have like the top tier budget or budget and everything. Like for me, everything that I've I've had to stream and everything, I've either got from past Christmas Christmases or I've bought myself. Yeah, and that's the thing that's really challenging about you know this job and this career choice that you know everyone wants to make, but no one wants to put in like the true time to do it. Like you see, um. You see people in the streaming world that are just burnt out after a while. Yeah. And, you know, if you, you don't understand that you need to take time and energy out of your day just to, you know, I understand it's just playing games and you, and it seems like it's just a fun job, but overall, it's yes, it is fun. I enjoy doing it, but it's still stressful to keep people entertained and keep the footage, uh, you know, nice and clean streams podcasts um podcasts we'll be doing more often because it's more of a newer thing um we're gonna see how you guys like it so if you guys are enjoying the podcast make sure you like comment we will enjoy to read your opinions um but streams i know that i'm going to be streaming much more now that i have a a cycle down um and i know caleb was he just got a webcam. Yeah, I, j- I just got a webcam, so I'm starting to stream a lot more. Um, so I've been more re- I've been more frequent lately. I think the past three days I've been streaming once or twice per day, which is really nice. I like being that active. But my old schedule was once every Friday, and I didn't stick to that because I didn't have a webcam, and it seemed really hard for me to believe, like think of myself as a streamer if I didn't have something sim- like simple as a webcam. But since I have that now, uh, I'm playing a lot more of playing a lot more games uh, on stream, streaming a lot more. So hopefully my schedule will be mon- Monday, Wednesday, Friday, with mm. break periods in the middle for editing videos, get some stream montage videos up there. I'll probably have the same like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. yeah, but like you need you need to balance making YouTube videos and streaming and having a normal life. Life and running into running an entire clan. Yeah. If you guys don't know, I'm not leader of ACOG anymore, but I still am a big part of decisions and stuff, and you know, making money choices along with Jack. It's 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 tough. <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility for a 15 and 14 year old, but yeah, yeah. it's a challenge. We make it work. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Looking at my Save the Turtles thing. <laughs> that was from the video. I was making a funny edit because you said something about Save the Oh, yeah, I remember that. So if you guys do not know what we're talking about, um, <laughs> Caleb, or ACOG Vision, has just posted a brand new video. Well, not brand new, but like a day old. Um, so pretty new. But he has posted a brand new video on <laughs> um, his Rage compilation in... His uh his stream last a couple nights ago, it was super fun to play. I know I went up a ton of levels. We played shipment almost all night. All night. Oh my it god, that crazy. is. I cannot deal with shipment anymore, dude. <laughs> okay, let's talk about let's talk about Call of Duty real quick. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about Call of Duty. What are your opinions on Call of Duty right now? Modern Warfare. Yes. All right, so my opinions on Modern Warfare is I really like the game. I think it's pretty realistic. Um, I think some aspects of the game, like the VTOL jet and um, the Bison, the PB Bison, I think they are a little overpowered. Um, but I mean, it's nothing that can't be fixed, though. Yeah. Um, some other things that I don't like about Modern Warfare is the microtransactions. Um, they said that they weren't going to add any. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that 
that's the thing that they were saying they were going to pride themselves on mm-hmm. is there was going to be little to no microtransactions whatsoever, yet they're now making Battle Pass uh, tiers that you have to buy. They're making skins that you have to buy. It's all cosmetic stuff, but when it really comes down to it, the Battle Pass thing, you are getting weapons. Yeah. So it's beginning... No, it's starting well, to do the old Call of Duty thing of it's being pay to win. They did uh, make all the weapons that you get in the battle pass. They made them all free, um, which is good. Um, I can't, I can't complain about that. Um, personally, I do have the battle pass, so I get everything if I complete it. Um, but they did make all of the new weapons and the DLC weapons completely free for the entire community, which is nice. But there are some things that. There are some really nice cosmetics, and I mean, I guess I can't blame them for charging people for them. I mean, they got to, you know, pay for something, but the game did cost $60, $70 if you didn't get it yeah. with the beta sale, which is... Seems- and now I still think it's like $40, $45. Yeah, yeah roughly. But that's it's, crazy. you know, games are super expensive nowadays, and that's why I think, you know, something that a lot of kids are, like, missing out these days because we grew up with something that I like to call couch gaming. You got two or three of your friends all had a controller. You were playing, like, Wii, Xbox One, PS3, all on the couch, yeah. just playing games. And they were the cheapest games that you could find. No, I used to... We got a Wii U when I was little, and uh, we used to sit around and play, like, that Legends of Zelda type thing. And it was really fun because it was, like, a VR game, except you weren't 360. It was just on the screen. And it was super fun because you had an archer... Some swords people, and you could control your thing with the your sword with the controller, and it was super fun. But you never. It was free. It was a free game, um, and everything else. It was like twenty, fifteen dollars. I mean, I don't think you really, or you generally had games that cost sixty or fifty dollars. Yeah, and that's the, that's the thing. Yes, the um, you know, the, some of the cost comes in the fact that it takes so much to make these games so realistic and everything, and I'm so glad games are like that, but it's really tough to, you know, grow the generation of, you know, gamers with people that just can't buy the game. And that's definitely an issue that a lot of these high price games are facing. I mean, they're not, well, they're not opening up to the other parts of society that don't have enough money or can't scrounge around money to buy these games. Call of Duty has made some steps towards it. They did make COD Mobile. Which was free. Which was really nice. COD Online, I think, is free as well. I think so. I don't know what that is. That is. It's basically the same thing as COD Mobile, just COD Mobile is on your phone. Uh, they have made strides to do that. They weren't, you know, the best uh, COD games, but, you know, at least they were trying to do something. Fortnite, a very popular game, was in fact made free. Yes, I had a whole bunch of microtransactions, but they were all cosmetic, and there were nothing against, you know, pay-to-win thing, because it was a Battle Royale game, which I guess is really simple to make it uh, all cosmetics and no pay-to-win, because it's kind of impossible. Everyone has an equal amount of chance of getting something. And that's the issue. When... A lot of these gaming communities, they open up to more communities and um, other people. They always run into the fact that people complain all the time, and those complaints always end up facing the developers, and they always have to change these things. And a lot of the time, it's kind of nice to have a limited amount of people, um, but still. But there's been – they've definitely fixed it, but it's the thing of – some of these developers don't take into, like, fact of some of the things that they could have fixed in the first place to make that first opening game the best. Like, if you take Modern Warfare, for example, camping was a huge problem. Claymores were a huge problem. The 7 tw- 725 was a huge problem. And all these could have been fixed. A shotgun that can double as a sniper and still have two shots and kill with one is not okay. That should never have been in the game at all. Not a clip. I think I actually have a clip of me using the 727 in a gunfight game with uh, ACOG Vision, who is uh, right next to me. Um, but I think I do have a clip of me using the 727 in gunfight pretty pretty uh, lately, actually. And I just sniped a kid across the map. Maybe it's because he was low health, or maybe it's because the shotgun is a bit still OP. But 
but they had they caught three nerfs, which is really nice. Um, but you know, some of these fixes they could have been fixed in the first week, you know, and it it had to come to uh people actually leaving because you know it it was just it's not it's not. And that's the most difficulty, in my opinion, to make a game. If like let's say me and you make a game, it's it's cool, it's awesome, it's it's perfect, right? In our in our opinion, and we release it to the world, right? We just put it out there, put it on the Xbox, put it on PC stores or whatever. The issue, people will buy it, right? And then they won't feel as comfortable with their decision to buy it because they'll get old or they'll get bored of it, and that makes them mad. So they find things in the game that are broken or things that need fixing to try to leverage change. And that is a huge issue with gaming developers because it's like a huge issue in gamers like in general. Yeah. We're, we're at such a modern age where everything is at our fingertips. We never have the chance to be bored. And when we are bored, we immediately react to try to fix it. Mm-hmm. Or we complain about it. Exactly. Not a lot of us actually take the time to, you know, appreciate what we, what we have, and when we're bored, it's like agony. Mm. Most people don't even go through dinner without having some sort of screen or something going on, because that little short time, an hour, hour and a half, they're bored, completely bored. And it's it's kind of disappointing because it's it's destroying our society because. People are spending more times on their screens than in actual life. And that's affecting not only themselves, but the people around them. Um, don't get me wrong, it's completely fine to um, play video games or let loose every once in a while, you know? I mean, we, we love video games. Yeah. This is literally what we want to make our career out of. Um, but we have to make time. But, you know, we have to make time. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta. Take a little break. And that's what I'm actually trying to do a lot more. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to not necessarily take a break from, like, technology all the whole, but take a break from, you know, posting on YouTube, worrying about whenever my next stream is going to come out, worrying about my views uh, for videos, and just making videos that I personally want to make. And that's, that's good to live by. Yeah, not worrying about... Because I used to post a video, and every time I walked into school the next day, I was terrified. That someone was going to hate it, and they were going to stop me in the hallway and say something about it, which people have done. They've done that, and it hurts people. It hurts a lot to know that your creation was hated by someone. But now I've just learned, I mean, I haven't completely learned this, but I'm trying to learn that just don't care. Like, I make the things that I want to make because that's the whole reason I started a YouTube channel in the first place was to make things that I enjoyed doing and I enjoyed making that I was proud of what I was putting out. To live by. And it's something that more people need to realize is that you need to do something you enjoy instead of something that other people enjoy. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Selling out's pretty dope. <laughs> but, I mean, still, you have to do things that you enjoy. If you sell out, you're, you're never going to feel that self-enjoyment that you felt when you did do something you liked. And I... It means something to be, like, comfortable with what you do. And that's needed more in streams and YouTube and other things. So, is Twitch and YouTube and everything what you want to do with your career? When you're- well, when I'm older, I was actually thinking about going into the medical field and being a paramedic. But streaming right now is an awesome side hobby, and it's super fun. Um, but yeah, what about you? Um, I definitely wanted to move in with computers and stuff, not to shift away from the streaming work completely. YouTube and Twitch and everything, not Twitch because that's a newer concept, but YouTube has been my dream career since I learned that it could be a path. I, I remember when I was younger, I watched this channel called Markiplier. Uh, I, I've heard of it, yeah. Okay. I watched him for years. For as long as I can remember, I was watching Markiplier, and he made these stupid little videos, and then I learned the ads in front of them 
gave him money. <laughs> and I learned that these stupid little videos were supplying money for the next videos that he made. He was making revenue off these little recording stuff that he enjoyed making. And I thought that was crazy. I, when I was younger, any time I had access to a camera, I would be, I would be taking it, recording things, recording myself doing things, taking pictures, doing whatever I could, just to, yet again, goes back to our old thing, just to fulfill my boredom. And it wasn't even boredom at the time. It was just the child's imagination taking over with the stuff that I had. Yeah. And, I mean... Yeah, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I mean, that's a good story. And I, I think it, I think it goes back to people want to do YouTube and everything because most people have a fear. And if you guys don't have this fear, you can say that whatever. They don't want to leave this world without leaving a good impression, without leaving their mark on it some way that when they leave. Part of them is still here. You have these people that died so many years ago that we still talk about to this day. Astronomers. Veterans. Astronomers, veterans, presidents, leaders. Exactly. Um, they're all remembered because they've left, left a mark. Exactly. And people, they, in the internet, it's such an efficient way to spread your word or spread your mark. And... People always grab that opportunity to spread their word or put their mark on it. And I'm, I'm so happy that, and I'm, I'm so happy that um, YouTube has turned into such like amazing things. People, we have replanted whole forests based on YouTube. Team trees. Have you ever seen that? No. They've raised millions of dollars to replant trees to save the planet. This idea of internet internet was originally created it was just an idea you know this is it's not even a physical thing this is literally just the clout it's technology it's signals it's wires it's supposed to be a way to contact people and to research things if, if, if you think about it internet you can't there's nothing here it's this is we're literally sitting in internet right now if you don't know the way the cloud and everything works is it travels through different screens we are in the cloud right now and you can't see anything. But something so invisible has made such a big impact on so many people's lives that we're at the age that, you know, it's, it's like the, one of the best times to be alive. Something that simple can make such a great change in the world. And internet hasn't always made great changes. It's made some bad impacts. Um, internet is led to teenage suicides or middle-aged su suicides. Um, internet is also, I mean, well, I don't know, but there are things that the internet has brought down. Um, and that's the thing that people really need to take into account. It is so easy to type every, anything that you would like to say on a computer. And if you thought about what if the internet works like this? you're talking to the actual person. Would you say half the things that someone would type on comments? Would you tell a person face to face they should commit suicide that day? That's the thing. It's that's, a that's the, the internet is a protective layer they can hide behind. Layer they can and, behind. It's an exactly. and it's an easy way to dodge face to face contact. They are they are hiding behind profiles, firewalls all these things, they're hiding behind a keyboard, saying whatever is on their mind, believing that it's not going to hurt anyone. And it does. It impacts everything. Say, hurts. It is everything. So, like you said, internet has made some pretty crazy changes in the world. I mean, this, the whole Save the Turtle Act. I mean, that started from one single Instagram post. Save the Seals. I know I've been seeing that almost every single on almost every single story I've ever seen. I mean, there's like, I've seen these videos of seals getting clubbed in Canada, and it's awful. It's terrible, but it's it's raised so much awareness. It although it's turned the whole save the turtles thing turned into a big meme with Visco girls and everything, but the thing is, yeah, 
and and you're still supporting it. Every time you saw, every time you saw that meme about skiskiska and I oop crap, you thought about the metal straws. You thought about hmm. And I bet that that has actually led to donations, huge donations. And people actually have bought metal straws or hydro flasks. And they have actually spent their money to make a change. Even though you're spending $80 to buy a metal bottle that you could buy somewhere else. No hate. <laughs> I I have my own hydro flask, but I got all those for free. Still, it's making a change. Um, Even the metal straws. But... I mean, you even see, like, stores, coffee shops, they're changing to cardboard, or not cardboard, but, like, cork straws, and it's it's making huge impacts. Yeah, and it's the, it's the thing of, a lot of people say that we're so upkept in our screens and everything that we, you know, don't do anything. We, a lot of us, although it doesn't look like we're doing something... We're trying to fix the problem that the past generations have started. Yes, we've added on to it, but Gen Z right now has done more to push for bettering the world than the past three generations have. True, but the factor that we are fighting against is we also have made the worst impact on the world. Pollution levels have gone way up or have skyrocketed, if that's a better word to use. Um, I mean, clubbing seals, <laughs> um, trash on the beaches. I mean, that's all mostly from us, Gen Z. I don't well, think it is. probably not. But it's, it's from all of us. And um, we have made a pretty big impact on that. And we are making an even bigger impact to try and stop it. And obviously, it's it's gonna be almost impossible to clean everything up, clean everything up, because it's past decisions that you cannot fix. You can think back on it and fix it. Hindsight is twenty twenty. If a lot of you don't know what that means, everything is clear when you look back on it. You can always choose the right decision because it's fair. It's happened. It's there. You can literally see it perfectly. You can see what you did wrong. You can see what has happened. And people need more hindsight. I mean, because instead of looking in the past, we need to look towards the future. Yeah, and it's and it's the thing of you need to take the lessons learned from the past, and you need to fix them. Yes, we've caused some pollution. I literally, I don't believe it's this general. We've definitely made an impact. It's definitely been. Made an impact. We've we've made an impact, yes, but, you know, like any other generation, we have put stuff out there that isn't supposed to be out there. But if you look back, a lot of people are going to argue the fact that, you know, whatever the, uh, let's go with the uh, 70s with, like, the whole hippie movement, save the planet, whatever, they didn't make strides to actually do it. We have made actual progress. We've cleaned up, to- like, entire beaches, planted entire forests, reduced the air pollution by a large margin. It's not a huge margin. It's still, it's still, it's, 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 it's still, still a problem, margin. but it's still something. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that our gener- generation has accomplished, and I feel like that's something n- the next generation will finish. The, well, that's what we have to hope for. Exactly. The Earth isn't going to be around forever. We all know this. Um, but it's best if we live in the best possible Earth that we have right now. Yeah, we just have to live in the now and not look... We just have to look at our future and we have to decide whether... If it's worth it to clean it up or to make a make a decision to... Clean up that beach you saw, or to pick up that trash. It's the decisions you make that affect the world around you. That's a lot of the things that people, you know, don't think about going back on to living in the now and looking at your future and everything. A lot of people, you know, they live in the past. They think back day to day, and it goes a lot. It goes along very well with the anxieties of people that have. Uh, you know, depression and everything, they're looking back on their past mistakes and they're living in there. 
they're living in those. And here's a little tip to help you. So, you remember something really embarrassing about you, correct? Like, you can think back in your brain to something that... Oh, yeah, ground energy. Just about. Oh, yeah, ground energy. <laughs> now, think of something... Think of someone else. Think of something embarrassing they did. It's gonna take you a little longer, right? Yeah. You can barely remember it. Now, think back. No one else remembers that. Obviously, our class does, because it's funny as hell. No one else is gonna remember. So, if you just live in the now, you can live in the, like, most... Like, you can live in the best part of your life. You just have to live your own life and forget bad instances that have maybe happened in the past. I mean, I'm not saying forget those eight murders or something, but forget the bully you had in eighth grade or whatever. Whatever is bogging you down, you just need to lift that weight and move on. Yeah. All right, so let's shift our gears back to gaming real quick with the bullying thing. Has that been recorded? Yeah. Okay. Let's shift gears back to that. Have you think have have you think that cyberbullying has gone down? Has what? Cyberbullying has gone. I think personally, I think it has gone up. Um but it is a pretty broad object to stop. I mean, you cannot control other people's decisions or what they're going to do or what they're going to say. But let's let's talk about what goes through a person's head to go online and this happened to me the other day there was a f roughly 40 year old man judging by the voice cussing me out a 15 year old by the way over a video game i understand saying a few cuss words here and there my belief is that it's not very polite but i think uh cursing in some instances is just a or it's a way of releasing steam, yeah. Exactly. Releasing steam, yeah. Exactly. But cursing someone out, there's a difference between, I can just bleep this out, saying, and, but there's also a difference between that. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's how you emphasize how you talk. And it's difficult to know whether you're joking or not on a laptop, um, or through a video or a content creator's screen. Because if somebody say, hey, you effing suck. I mean, that could just be a joke. But the person won't know because there's no, there's no context. And that comment can hurt someone's feelings. And, uh, yeah, it may just be the uh, millennial in me, or the Gen Z, whatever you want to call it, but that would hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? You know us Gen Zs. You know are a little snowflake of people, but yeah. But you know the weak ones. You know we're frail. We're bit. We're a little brittle. But the thing is, the harder you are, the harder you fall, man. So we might be little brittle things, but we don't fall very easy. <laughs> I mean, we fall a little bit, but when we give right back up and we you know try again, and that's the thing that you know we have a boost of communities. Every instance that you have, there is a gaming community. And that's the thing that a lot of people forget sometimes, that when you log on to that game and you agree to those terms and conditions, you are agreeing to be a part of this community and a part of this you know, family of gamers. And that's why whenever you leave a game, and I think I'm, this is the last point I'm going to make, and we might end this right here. Every time that you leave a game, you need to say these two letters, GG means good game. It was a good game. You're going to try again next time. Thank you for playing. Thank you for trying your hardest against me. Thank you for making me better. And that is what a person should always say in a game, real life, if they're playing sports, if they didn't get a good grade, and uh, if there's no chance of improving it. Thank you for at least grading my paper. It's going to be, you're going to be pissed. You're going to be pissed off no matter what. But give them gratification. I know a personal story I had was – so actually a couple of months ago, I was doing a uh, math summative, and of course – well, actually, I bombed it, and I think I got like a uh, 70, 79 on it, and I felt really bad. And Caleb was the one who kind of said, you know what, shrug it off. And I asked my teacher, and she let me 
redo it. Um, and yeah, I guess that really helped because my grade was at like a 79 and it sucked. But I got over it. I let the past be the past and I fixed it. I got mad at her for like a week and now I'm fine. But that's uh, another thing I learned. It was there's one lacrosse player that had this idea. I forgot who it was, but he said that when you're working on something or if you're playing a game, uh, you know anything you're doing, if you have a certain goal and you have a certain like time limit to reach, let's say you're working out, okay, and you have you want to reach that fiftieth um, rep, but you can't. You top out at 45, and you're so mad at yourself, and you want to keep going, but if you keep going, you know you're going to hurt yourself. You need to stop it wherever you can, and it's called about improvement. Improve on what you've done. Don't over yourself. If you missed that shot that last game, don't go out and make more shots. You go out to practice, try, try better, try harder, and you leave the next game as time for improvement. You improve that time, and then you improve the next one, and all these improvements are going to stack up, and you're going to be the best that you can be. And you need to take every win that you have as gold. To have these days. Because, I mean, life's tough. I mean, even parents from past generations, it's tough. Life's tough. Things stack up. Things suck. Um... And you just have to use your little wins as ways to just keep you going. But I think that's all the time we have left. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. Thank, right. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for oh, sharing. Yeah. It, it's actually <laughs> We're quite fun. We had a good conversation. But, yeah, thanks to take away from this podcast. Uh, you know, be nice online. You know, it's, it's for everyone. Always end off with a GG and always leave room for improvement because that's something that a lot of people don't do. Save the turtles. Nah, save the turtles. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next podcast.